How's it going, everyone? It's your boy, Jose, aka the YC Geek, aka TNG, aka your Elden Lord, yours, even Stannis' Elden Lord, if you believe it, even his, aka the guy who chose this shirt for a reason, because today we're going to be discussing Game of Thrones, specifically House of the Dragons. But as some of you may know, I am, or rather, I was a big Game of Thrones fan. Technically, you could say I was a Song of Ice and Fire fan since I've read the novels, but I had also enjoyed the first four seasons of Game of Thrones. Me and let me reiterate that, okay, please. The first four seasons of Game of Thrones, because season five was fucking trash. The way they butchered Stannis, the Manis, and and everything else was downhill. Fucking Ramsey was terrible. Whatever, whatever. But but the first four seasons of Game of Thrones were a fantastic example of an adaptation done well. And yes, there were changes from the books. To the not to, to the show absolutely but this is one of the straw man arguments that those fucking mind those idiots in hollywood and their rabid mindless stands they love to prop up oh oh you just want it to be identical to the books or the source material no 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 you can make changes just don't radically gut the property that you're adapting to, so that you can use it as a platform or an engine for your trash okay the problem is that a lot of these Writers are, are talentless. They're maidenless. Okay. They're maidenless and they're talentless. And they can never make anything good on their own. They can't. So they have to piggyback on the creativity of others. And that's what we fans get mad about. That's what we get mad when you take our beloved properties for your shitty adaptations because you can't make anything original on your own. But the first four, again, first four seasons of Game of Thrones showed how you can incorporate some changes and do it well. It never hampered the story. It didn't change the source material into something it wasn't. A, a, a great example for me, for me, was Arya in Harrenhal in season two. In the books, her interactions are with Roose Bolton, which I was like, okay. Uh, whereas in the show, they were with Tywin Lannister. And those scenes were great. And of course, there, and of course, there were many other things that helped game of thrones become the juggernaut that it was the the musical score the set pieces costumes the acting those are all things that were like top notch they never deteriorated or dro and dropped in quality from season five onward it was just that the you know terrible writing and the pacing and all of that trash is unfortunately what made game of thrones the wet fart that it is and that's what it is now it's a punchline it's a punchline. It's a, it's a, uh, a, like a, oh my God, I can't think of the word, but it's like a perfect example of hubris, sheer fucking hubris, of what happens when you take something so beloved and, 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 and let's, and do not shit, you do not kid yourself. Game of Thrones was beloved. That show was riding high. It, even in the later seasons, people were glued to their seats world worldwide to see what the fuck was going to happen. People, it's like everywhere, everywhere. People from different countries, every Sunday night, they were like, oh shit, let's, what's going to happen? And, they would, and then the next day they would go and talk about it. I, me too, with my, you know, coworkers and the stuff. And that's, you know, the wa that water cooler experience is what you want for your television shows, which is why I personally think it's, it's uh, the binge model doesn't work. I think you need to drop things on a weekly basis as a, as a business, as a business. I'm sure for fans, fans love to be able to binge it all at once, but as a business, you should be releasing things weekly. But to think of how they had this show that was at the top and ruined its legacy, it, 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 should, it should serve as a warning. That's, what, that's the word I was really kind of looking for earlier. Not that, that yes, yeah, so an example, but it should serve as a warning for people. That you cannot take fans for granted and to be very careful because you can go from here real fast to here. Okay. And, and, and don't, and you know, David and Dan Benioff, those, it's mind boggling how those fuckers could have ruined it. And, and to be fair, to be fair, George Martin deserves a great share of the blame as well. Okay. It wasn't just those two idiots, but they, they fucked it up royally. They didn't, they didn't fumble it. They fucked it up royally okay 
They shouldn't be allowed to touch any other property. And I know that they were kept away from Star Wars, but it's not, obviously Disney doesn't need help ruining that. Uh, you know, so now we're here three years later from the disastrous, oh, I still can't, it's disastrous end of Game of Thrones. That fucking last season, oh my God, so bad. To this, to this, House of the Dragons. Uh, or rather, House of the Dragon, I should say. Now, there was a trailer that came out this week. I already saw it. My friend Tam told me about it. I didn't even fucking, you know, know that it came out. And that, to me, just keeps showing, like, holy shit, like, wow, it's how far Game of Thrones is out of the whole pop culture kind of thing. Like, yes, other pro other studios are trying to replicate that success. I Look how fucking bad uh, Halo is, you know, with adding unnecessary sex scenes to, to the Master Chief and shit like that. Like, that's not, that's not fucking Halo. But it's because, but the reason that they're doing that is because they're chasing. They're, they're, all these studios are trying to have their own Game of Thrones. And they're failing. All of them. They're all failing. But we have House of the Dragon trailer came out this week. I didn't even fucking know. Now, I watched it. I watched it. I didn't get a chance to do a reaction video. Uh, but I want to watch it again with all of you. I want to watch it again with all of you. Because this show has a lot riding on it. It has the potential to give Game of Thrones a new start or be the final nail in the coffin. And, and you know, can it redeem Game of Thrones, the franchise? Can it clear out the smell of the trash that that show left? And I think that part of it, obviously the show came out in 20, the, the finale came out in 2019. Pandemic happened. So there's been things that have slowed down the, the production and the release of this. But I think that for... HBO, I think that worked out really well because it let some of the fucking bad smell waft out. Get that shit out of here. And I think that they're kind of coming in where a lot of these properties are falling apart. Hard is terrible. Halo, MCU's, you know, yeah, Doctor Strange has been a success. That was, that was never going to be in question because it's basically riding on the slipstream of No Way Home. But the MCU as a whole is floundering. And I think that HBO has a chance to be like, okay, let's sneak in and let's give people something good. Not to say that this is going to be good, but I'm just saying that they have a potential and that's why this has to fucking rise up to it. Um, you know, it can be awful. God, or, or, or just as bad when no one's going to give a fuck or even watch it. So there's a, th this, this trailer has a lot that is riding on it. This show has a lot riding on it. Now I'm going to, we're going to watch it gonna watch it together and like i said i've watched this but i want to watch it again i want to get it fresh in my head and i want to watch it with all of you but let me just uh press in my steam deck here hbo and you were like i said the music baby costumes look at that set pieces let's go these fucking shots man Which is what, that's a tie-in, that's, it's great too, because that's something that, remember, Tywin Le uh, Lannister was talking about, legacy. That's what he wanted. That, that he said, he told her, that is why 300 years later, people remember Rhaegar. She's not wrong, she's not wrong in this, and this, it's fine, yeah, absolutely. You're right. Now these are the only there's only two actors that I really recognize in this. That that guy and this one here. Someone's getting the asses beat. You hear that? Boop, boop. Ugh, the music is so fucking good. The score of Game of Thrones is so good. August 21st, dude, that is almost, that's what? So in a few days, it'll be the 21st of May. So we got June, July, two months, three months, August. That's it. It's right around the corner. It's right around the corner. And there are some, like, I just want to go back to this music over here. 
Um, I can't wait to hear like what the opening song is gonna be. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know. Are they gonna go back to bum bum ba bum bum ba bum bum? They have to put it at some point in the show. You can't. That that fucking opening is so iconic, so legendary. Here coming in now. So, yeah, we, we, I wanted to watch it with you all. And here's the thing that there, there, there's a couple plus. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I am cautiously optimistic for this show for a few reasons. For a few reasons. One, the source material for this show is already written out. That's a big plus. This is going to take place during the Dance of Dragons, which is several hundred years before the Targaryen dynasty came to an end. George Martin will also be having a bigger hand in this. I mean, what else is he going to do? Keep fucking pulling along all the hopeful fans that, you know, that are about a winds of winter. He's, he'll never write those books, by the way. He's never going to write them. He'll never finish that series. So at least, at least let him put his focus on the show. See if he could wash away some of the shit that is clinging on his already forever tarnished legacy. Because that, ma that man has created a fascinating world. No doubt. No doubt. No diggity. Two, we're going to be in Westeros. When magic was still at a high point. Dragons and sorcery and all that. Still, they're very much a thing. I, I love that. I love that. One of the many faults that the later Game of Thrones seasons had was that they did away with the magical aspects of of the show. You know, there was no Lady Stoneheart. And it's crazy because in the books, magic is returning. It's already pretty much back. It, it, even as early as book two, Daenerys is told in Carf that magic is coming back. And they don't know if it's a comet or if it was the return of dragons that brought magic back or if it's magic coming back that, that allowed the dragons to return. Because there's a scene where she watches this dude climbing up like a, a ladder made out of fire in Carf. And the guy, the, the, the person who's telling her that magic is coming back, he's like, man, that guy couldn't even back then. He barely was able to spit out fire. Now he's fucking climbing up a fucking ladder made out of fire. So it's very clear that magic is back. And they did away with that in the shows unless it was convenient for the plot. You know, like Melisandre bringing, bringing back John. That's the only time they were like, okay, okay, we'll bring back the magic. Fine, we'll bring it back. But here, we're gonna, you know, magic is back. And we're, or rather, magic is here. It's never left. It might be, it's gonna obviously dwindle down centuries from now, but it's still at a high point. The, the Targaryens still are dragon riders. That, so I'm looking forward to that. And we're gonna see it in what is a fucking fantasy series. So when you think fantasy, you think of fucking magic. So that's a plus for me. Another. Another plus is the fact that a lot of these actors, I, I either don't recognize them or I do. And they're not exactly household names for me, for me. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I would not, I'm not shitting on any of them or their credits or what they've done, but you know, honestly, I, but I love that. I love that. I, I'm happy. One of the complaints, one of the many complaints I have with the Marvel cinematic universe is that they don't even try anymore with the casting. They just ask celebrities to come on. Harry Styles, Charlize Theron, anyone with a bit of name power. Let's go. Let's fucking go. You know, um, and, and, my, and my, my friend Josh hates the fact that they constantly are recasting people. Like, they have Oscar Isaacs. He was in Star Wars. Now let's put him. He was in Apocalypse, which they now own. Let's put him in fucking Moon Knight. They've got his biggest pet peeve is Chris Evans, that he was Human Torch. And, and I get it. I get it. Because there are a lot of talented actors out there. You can, you can, hey, you can reach out. You would, you know, there's other new people you could put into your fucking thing instead of rehashing the same people over and over. And what, uh, and for me, the only, the only two actors that I recognize was Matt Smith. And, and I don't, and I didn't even know their names, honestly. I recognized them, but I had to look up their names. So Matt Smith, who I know played the doctor in Doctor Who. I've never watched Doctor Who. I know that he was a doctor. I, I, like, as soon as I saw that guy's face, it's very distinct. I was like, oh, yeah. I've seen that guy before. And then I looked up and he was the doctor in Doctor Who. And Riss Ivins, I, I, I think, I believe that's how you say his name. And I remember he's the guy who played uh, Dr. Kurt Connors 
in the Amazing Spider-Man movie, in the the one with Andrew Garfield, the one out of those, the the one that Andrew Garfield did, that was out of the two, that was at least tolerable. Fucking Electro one was trash, but the, at least the first one was tolerable. Two doctors, two, two of them. But I like the the idea of them hiring on the basis of of acting ability. I try not to go just fucking plumb whatever is you know whoever's popular at the moment or who might have X amount of followers or the sort. So for me, again, I don't want to say that I think this is going to be a, a home run. I'm not sure. They're giving it 10 episodes. That's great. That's great. They're going to give it some time to flesh out. I know that usually their episodes, if they, their their episodes always were kind of, at least in the first few seasons, used to be like 50 something plus minutes, plenty of time, not like fucking Moon Knight that had six episodes and the episodes were honestly like 30 fucking minutes because the fucking credits were 14 minutes. No, I think I am, I am looking forward to House of the Dragon. I hope that it can revitalize my passion for that, that franchise. I will be reviewing it. I will be watching every episode and I will be reviewing it. And I will believe me if, if there is something that I'm going to sit there like a fucking you know, like I, I, I fucking overly critical and fucking sitting down every, it's going to be game of throw. It's going to be house of the dragon. So you at least do well, at least do well. I'm not saying you got to hit the home run, at least do well, set up the foundation. And then hopefully you can build on that. But I am cautiously optimistic. I think they're going to have many of the things that I loved about game of Thrones, the music score, uh, set pieces, the costumes. I think the acting is going to be there. All we need for you to do is the writing. Pacing, just please don't don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. All right. That's all I'm asking HBO. Because right now, you're you're one of the few. You're you HBO right now has it, it, it's one of the studios or whatever the fuck you would call it, entertainment companies that has properties that I enjoy or that I've enjoyed. Because uh, Disney's fucking it up, Paramount's fucking it up. They're just all Netflix is it's it's fucking it up too. And at least HBO has, like, oh, and I'm talking about older shows like Oz, Wire, Sopranos. Like, there's a lot of great shows on, on HBO. The first four seasons of Game of Thrones. So I hope that this is at least a little bit of a return to good form, a little bit of a return to grace for Game of Thrones. And and I also hope that this is. Oh, and how, how could I forget? I I remembering now as I finish the sentence, but this is another studio that's fucking something up. I hope that this is a success, that, that it is a success because I want for this to fucking bloody the nose of Amazon's ring of power. I want this to really sting rings of power because I want people to rings of power comes out September 2nd and this comes out August. What was that? August 12th. Let me look at the date what was that august 21st august 21st so this will still be airing when rings of power comes out this is going to be a, a battle of the drug that was answered dragons it's going to be a battle of it you're going to have august 21st game of thrones comes out then second episode and then on the fourth comes out rings of power uh, on the um second so the week right there so that week Rings of Power comes out. This is going to be a battle between two very, very large fantasy properties. And I want for people to watch this show, if it's good, if it's good, to watch this show so that they're not tuning their eyeballs to Rings of Power. So if this show is a big hit, trust me, if it's doing well, I will be singing its praises nonstop to get it away from Rings of Power. So let's hope, let's hope for the best. Please, 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 HBO, don't fuck this up. Don't fuck it up. Everybody else is fucking everything up. I'm fucking my, my look look what they've done to my boy fucking Tolkien's works, man. Anyway, this has been the NYC Geek. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit it. Hit it right now. Hit it right now. Unless you're subscribed, then please don't hit it. Don't hit it. Also, while you're at it, please consider hitting that sh like, that share button, hit that freaking bell. You can get all the notifications when another video goes live. Leave a comment down below. I love to engage with all of you. I love to chat with every one of you. I try my absolute best to respond to every single comment, every single one. Tell me if you are looking forward to it, especially in the comments. Let me know. Are you looking forward 
to House of the Dragon. If you are, why? Or were you someone who watched Game of Thrones beforehand? Uh, how did that show end for you? And are you looking forward to House of the Dragon? If you're not, tell me again. Were you previously a Game of Thrones fan and you didn't like how this ended, so you're worried about this? Or if you're brand new to all this, what do you think of House of the Dragon? What did you think of the trailer? Let me know. Uh, as, and if you haven't already, please make sure to follow me over on twitch.tv slash NYC geek, where I also stream over on Twitch and, you know, follow me on that cesspool that is Twitter fucking discussing over there. Remember always, always, always your time precious. I thank you for sharing it with me. I really do take care of each other and stay safe.